you go. Hello everyone, I finally got my chair back, so, ow! I am going to do a very casual video today in which I go through some books on my TBR list which are potential reads. I'm not saying I'm going to actually get to these books in the future, but they are books that have grabbed my attention lately and that I have an eye for and I might get them from the library, I might buy them, who knows. But I thought it would be fun to chat to you about them and let you know that they are on my radar and you might see those books in my upcoming reading blog. So the thing that got me started on this video is last night when I was looking for books at the library online and I decided to order a copy of Every Note Played by Lisa Genova because I've been interested to read that book ever since I read this one, Still Alice. No, that's a lie. This book I have ordered from the library is actually a very new release, but I have been interested in reading it because I know the author. This is Still Alice. It's also now a movie, but I remember reading it some years ago and really liking it. I like how this author combines diseases with fascinating tales about everyday life and how your disease might affect your family and your job and your life in general. In this book I have ordered from the library we get to hear about a man who is a pianist and then one day his fingers start playing tricks on him and he can't play the piano anymore which of course is devastating. So that was the book that got me started on wanting to do this video but let me Take you through the books on my Goodreads list one by one. There are quite a few of them. First of all, we have Vengeful by V.E. Swab. I have read the first book in this series, which is an adult fantasy kind of series about two men who want to become extraordinary, meaning that they want to survive death and come back to life stronger and better. That's at least the experiment they are doing in this first book and it's a book about revenge and power and it was a pretty good read. So I am curious to read the sequel which just recently came out. Then we have a non-fiction book which is A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. Apparently Bill Bryson is a very... Hi Siri, I've missed you. Apparently Bill Bryson is a very prolific author and I've never read any of his books, but it seems like he writes nonfiction that is very popular and that a lot of people have read. This one in particular is a book that people keep praising and it's on their favorites list. And I was just curious to read it because I would love to read about nature and going for a walk in the woods. That would be interesting and relaxing, I think. So that's the book I'm going for when I actually decide to pick up a book by this author. I also recently found out that Rachel Joyce is coming up with a new book called The Music Shop. I couldn't tell you anything about it other than it's about a music shop. And I have read other books by Rachel Joyce. I've read the one with Harold Fry and his Years of Pilgrimage. I think that's what it's called. And I like how her books are very cozy and very funny and peculiar. So I'm expecting that same kind of book in this novel. Then we have some John Boyne books, which I have put on my list just because I recently read his The Heart's Invisible Furies. Let me find it. Uh, if you follow my reading blogs, you will know that I read this book last month and it's it was my favorite book of the year so far. So I have added a few extra of his titles on my wish list or my TBR list. We have A History of Loneliness, The Absolutist and A Letter to the Sky. I, I don't really know where to start other than I have actually borrowed The Absolutist from the library. They had it in English so I decided to check it out and that's naturally where i plan on starting but let me know if you have read any of these titles and which one you prefer pachingo by min jin lee is a book that is a huge novel set in asia somewhere i think it's korea but i could be mistaken it could also be japan but 
I've been very hesitant to read this book because I wasn't sure it was a book for me. I wasn't that much into a huge family saga and historical fiction. I didn't think so at least, but lately I have been curious to read this book because it seems like everyone loves this book. Even though it's a very huge novel, it seems like it's a book that people fly through and it stays in their hearts and it's just a book that I feel would be great for when you when you want a comfort read that you can dive into and stay with for pages and pages so it is on my list i'm still on the fence about actually reading it but i am intrigued then we naturally have the haunting of hills how hill house by shirley jackson i mentioned in another video that i'm currently watching the tv show which is based on this horror novel and the show is really really scary but it has intrigued me to also read the book. I don't know if I will actually get to it this October or November. I might save it for next Halloween just because I would love to read this book during Halloween. That's the perfect time of the year. It's the perfect setting. And yeah, so we will see if I will actually get to it this year. Next on my list, I have My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mushfig. Hmm, this is a, I think it's a non-fiction book, but it could be written like fiction because it's about this woman who decides to relax for a year and do nothing as far as I have been told. I've, I find it interesting. And I will say the plot doesn't sound as intriguing as it could have been. I mean, reading about a woman who sleeps for a year, how interesting could that be? But then again, so many people have read it and it's one of their favorites now. I'm pretty much intrigued to find out what the heck she did with herself in that year and what it did to her and it's fascinating enough for me to actually pick up this book eventually and perhaps perhaps read it i mean if i pick it up i will read it that's for sure it's on my list at least then we have leanne moriarty's nine perfect strangers i am kind of a fan of leanne moriarty meaning that i have read and loved a few of her books and I've also read one book, My Husband's Secret, and I wasn't a huge fan of that one. So I'm kind of on the fence about her, but when I realized that she has a new book that has just come out, I was so ready to order it and read it, but then I didn't want to. I'm trying to not buy too many books these days just because I feel overwhelmed with my TBR so I'm trying just to go with the flow and if I want a new book I will try and get it from the library and not spend too much money on books right now at least so it's on my list it's one that I'm definitely interested in reading but if I'm getting it from the library I will have to wait at least six months until they actually have it available for checking out so that's a bummer when it comes to new releases but i'm okay with waiting i have so many other titles to get to in the meantime sarah Paris melmoth and that's because i read her the essex serpent some years ago and found it fascinating i'm so sad that it's one of those books that i've decided to give away because it was one of my most gorgeous books on my shelves and i don't have it anymore but nevertheless, I was intrigued by that story and this is her newest one. I think, let me check, I think this one is one of her shorter novels, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, it's 240 pages, so it's not a short novel, but it's one that I don't know too much about, actually. I think it's kind of scary. I think it's kind of got to do with, a, I don't know if it's a creature again like the Essex Serpent, but anyway, I'm intrigued enough to read it because of the author. I also have on my list The Witch Elm by Tanner French because I have fallen in love with Tanner French and her crime stories. I'm currently reading her The Dublin Murder Squad series. I'm slowly making my way through that one. And this is her newest book, which I believe is a standalone. So it's one that's going to be easy to get and read and then you have finished that story and that appeals to me a lot. Sarah Mars's The Ghost Wall. This is another new release and this is the short book I was thinking of. It's only about a hundred pages I believe 
and I fell in love with Sarah Mosser's The Tidal Zone and also her Night Waking. Actually, let me just find those books. These two novels, I cannot recommend them enough. I love them both dearly. So when I found out that she has a new book out, I put it on my wish list immediately. Then we have Anna James and her Tilly and the Book Wanderers, which is the first book in a new middle, middle grade series. And I'm not much into middle grade, but when I read about this book and when I heard about it through Anna James, not that I met her, but I heard about it in a video, I was very much fascinated because as far as I remember, it's about a child who reads books in a library and then the creatures from those books come alive in the library or something like that. I mean, that sounds really good to me. Then we have Sally Rooney's Normal People. Gosh, I really, really want to read this book. I am hesitant to buy it, once again, because I want to not buy too many books and pressure myself with my overwhelming TBR. But I am definitely going to get this book as soon as it gets in the library, which will be soon, I believe, because it was nominated for the Man Booker Prize. And also, I just, there is something about this author. I read her conversations with friends over summer and it was a book that I didn't really love while reading it, but afterwards it has grown on me and I now simply love it and I want to get more familiar with this author. And when I heard this book was nominated for that prize, I knew that it was one I wanted to read. I'm not sure about the actual cover. I don't think that the lime green goes very well with my books. I mean, it's not a problem really, but it's not my color. And also the tin can on the cover is not really my style. So I'm not sure about actually buying the book and owning it. I would prefer to get it in the library and hopefully love it. Another book that I was just about to order when I heard about it is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabot, which is the book from a French author that has now been translated into English and has found its way into booktube and a lot of people have been sent it for review or they have bought it and read it. It seems like it's on everyone's reading list these days. Well, I'm very glad I didn't actually buy it when I was about to because I realized it's really more of a children's book and it's a fantasy book and the reason why I wanted to read it to begin with is because it's from a French author and I am a French teacher, so naturally I was drawn to reading this new bestseller from France. But when I realized it's targeted more towards young people and children, I got a bit on the fence about it. So I'm still apprehensive about reading this book, but it is on my list so that I don't forget it. Then we have Affinity by Sarah Waters. The reason why I'm very curious to read this book now is because I'm currently reading Her Little Stranger. And this is a library book, it's in Danish. And I will say I'm very much enjoying it. It's a very slow read and it's a book that it takes some time to get used to the ambience and the setting and the characters. It's very slow going, but I'm loving it. And I want to read more by Sarah Waters now. So Affinity is next. Ooh. So Affinity is next on my list and I know that my library has that one. So I think it's one of the books that's at the top of my list. I also have Michelle Obama's new autobiography or is it a biography? I don't know if she's written it herself, but it's called Becoming and I don't think it's out yet. I think it will be out in November, but I have read her husband's autobiographies both of them. I don't know if there are more out and I really like them so I am interested to also read from her point of view about what it was like to be the first lady of America or the United States at least and what it's like now to not be that anymore and trying to continue your life without being the first lady. Something like that. I'm definitely curious to read her account of her life and what it was like to be in that position. Small Fry by Lisa Brennan Jobs. Now I'm smiling because I actually ordered that book at the beginning of September. I waited for a month. It never showed up. 
I wrote to the book depository and they told me that they didn't have any books unstuck. So they would have to order some more books and it didn't look like they were going to do that anytime soon. I don't know why. So I cancelled my order. So basically I don't have the book. I haven't bought it anyway but it is on my list because it's another non-fiction book written by Steve Jobs daughter. Steve Jobs was the man behind Apple and I have read his biography and really really liked it so I thought it would be kind of funny to read from his daughter's perspective and get her account of what it's like to be his daughter and what her life is like etc. So yeah it's on my list but let's see if I will actually get to it. Let's finish with this last book I have here which is The Corset by Laura Purcell. I need to find another book for you. Laura Purcell was also the author of The Silent Companions which I read recently and really really liked. It's a very good disturbing modern Victorian novel about a haunted house etc you know the drill so she has a new book out which is about prison or I, I'm not too sure actually but it's written in the same kind of style I think it's kind of Victorian and macabre and mysterious and I just think she does a really good job at writing these kinds of stories so that one is definitely on my list as well and what a gorgeous cover. I have been filming for almost 20 minutes now so I think I will stop the video here. I could go on with my wish list but let's not. Thank you so much for watching and please let me know in the comments if there are any of these books I've talked about which stand out to you and which you would like for me to read sooner rather than later. Thank you so much for watching and until my next video happy reading!